Today I'm a very excited Chopsy because I've got my hands on finally the 2021 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. Now the RSV4 is a bike I absolutely love. For 2021 it's got some restyling, it's got some engine work, it's got better electronics. Basically it is a whole new model for this year and finally middle of November I've got my hands on one. So join me for a spin on this amazing machine and uh, hold on tight because this could be a fast one. Chopsy, roll the intro. So before we get going, I've got to say a massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles. There's a big scuff there. That wasn't me. Massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles. You know, this is their demo. So if you want to ride this, book yourself in for a test ride because this is their actual demo machine. So I've been waiting to ride this bike for the last, a well, little year really. Since it was announced, I was hoping to get on an early ride of this and, and test it out. But that didn't happen. It's taken until mid-November, but never mind. Beggars can't be choosers and all that, so let's jump aboard. Now this should be quite interesting because I've had a BMW S1000 RM Sport on long-term loan from BMW the whole of the season. It's gone back now, but I can draw some very good comparisons with this machine. I've also ridden and spent about a week or two with the new 2021 Tuono, so I can see how this compares also to the Tuono. So as part of this video, I'll try and do a bit of comparison between those two other bikes, how they compare to this. But before we get going, and in the usual fashion, let's do a little bit of a noise check. And on this bike, oh, it's going to be heavenly. Listen to this. Oh, sex on wheels. That sounds so good. Let's go. The old RSV4 was showing its age a little bit. I mean, it had been the same design for the last sort of eight years, maybe even ten years. I hadn't really updated the look of that machine. It was a slow evolution, little changes every year. For 2021, it's almost like a clean slate. The engine is obviously more or less the same, but even that hasn't gone unchanged. It's an extra 22cc now, so it's a slightly longer stroke to make it a true 1100 and that's something they haven't done with the Tuono. The engine on the Tuono remained mechanically the same but on the RSV4 she's increased in capacity. Power is also now up to 217 horsepower. Crazy figures. Also for this year like the Tuono the electronics have been fully overhauled so she's now got a new IMU. Apparently it's something like six times faster, the electronics on this bike. And that was something I really noticed on the Tuono. Even on the road, you can tell the electronics are much better on these machines. The way the anti-wheelie and the, and the traction control is engaged, you know, really makes a difference. You don't have to be on track to get and feel the difference that, that those electronics make. You can make much better forward progress because the old bike, the wheel would start to lift, it would aggressively cut the throttle, it would drop, and it would repeat. It would repeat all the way up to like 100 miles an hour. The Tuono was much smoother the way that works. Whoa, jeez! God, that, that is fast! Oh my word. That pulls like you wouldn't believe. I've got a tuned H2. I've got a 250 horsepower H2. It doesn't pick up like that. That accelerates and the, well, the mid-range is stronger than the supercharged H2. That is an amazing amount of pull. Incredible! The biggest thing with this bike though is just the sound of it. <laughs> it sounds unbelievable. The RSV4 always was the best sounding road bike. In my opinion, it was the best sounding road bike you could buy. This bike is just an insane motorcycle. I've actually got it in the user mode. One of the great changes for 2021, as I mentioned, was the electronics. And what they've done on here, they've created three, well, I think there's four rider modes. 
and you've got a user mode, okay? So with the user mode, you can have oh, the wheelie control off, but the traction on. Now, I know other bikes have done that, like the Ducati's done that. It's not a new thing, that. But I've never ridden a bike which, which the electronics have been implemented so well that you can really, even with the traction on level 8, which I have it on now, you can it'll still let the wheel come up freely. On the old bike, it wouldn't, you know, you'd have to have the traction control on level 1 to let it, the wheel come up. Now you can have traction on level 8, it'll still let you wheelie and keep the traction in, in control. And I know everyone doesn't love wheelies and things like that, but that just proves how sophisticated the electronics are on this bike now. Oh, it's so fast. The biggest thing I noticed stepping off the Toyota onto this is this is higher geared. The gearing is a bit ridiculous on this, to be honest. I mean, that is second gear at, at 60 miles an hour, and it's fine. The ergos on this feel very nice actually. What I've always loved about the Tolona and the RSV4 is the shape of this tank where you can just lock your legs underneath the lip of the tank. It's beautiful. The bottom end comfort is beautiful. The pegs aren't too high. The pegs are actually slightly lower than they were on the, on the double R. And the fit around the tank is just lovely. It's one of the few bikes you could actually do a track day on without having to add, you know, tank pads because there's plenty of grip even on the standard tank because of the design of it but for the bars i fancy this is a little bit more of a stretch forward to the bars it feels a little bit longer stretch to the bars i'm six foot two the double r the bars were definitely closer to me and there was a little bit a little bit less weight on the hat on your wrists with the double r all right we got there mr ducati evening sir Really nice, the V2 Panigale. Ah, oh, the roads are a little bit damp, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful, which is a bit of a shame. We can't go to any extreme lean angles, but it's a great way of testing out the electronics. That's <laughs> so far. It picks up speed, it is just absolutely mental. I mean, absolutely, honestly, it's, it's way too much for the road, am I? And it's so addictive, that power, that you can't help but just open it up and then you glance at the speedo and you go, oh my good God, I'm going to jail. <laughs> that is this bike's biggest problem. And it's, it was, to a degree, it was the same with the Tuono, and that's why I said I could never because because of that it's just too mental and it makes me go too fast and it's too intoxicating but this is even more intoxicating even more mental oh i could never own one of these i'll be dead in a week the brakes are also amazing the last year's rsv4 when i rode that the brakes weren't very good I think it was just the bike, maybe it, well, you know, the brakes hadn't been bedded in very well, but this, they're lovely, perfect amount of bite on the lever, you know, they bite hard, hard and early, which is how I like them, and the Prillies are always like that. You know, if you get a lot of Japanese bikes, or, or Japanese bikes especially, they tend to have much soggier brakes, you know, you've got to put, they still work fine, obviously, but you just got to pull the lever more. The Aprilias have a lot of braking, or initial you know, bite on the lever, so you don't have to touch, you can just feather the brakes, which I like that. Obviously it's just down to pad material. The electronic suspension has also been revised for 2021, and the Tuono blew me away, well and Greg as well, it blew both of us away with how compliant, how plush the Olin's ET EC2 system is. This has the same system, but I fancy it's a little bit harsher on this. It's still beautiful. But I've tried swapping through the modes and I can't feel a massive difference in, in that massive, massive difference in comfort, you know, as you cycle through the modes. Now that could be down to the setup. I'm going to go into the menu and have a look at how they're set up because you can go in, the great thing about this bike, you can go in, you can customise all of that suspension. There's six different options for the suspension which have their own maps. There's, a, there's your own suspension maps which you can then assign and change on the fly 
to any one of the engine maps. So unlike the Panigales, you, you, you've got full flexibility of how you want your suspension with each of the different maps. And it's not fixed to the map, you, know, you, can, you can change it. So I love that. It's a very, very clever system, the way they've implemented it on this. Even though it's both got the EC2 systems, just the way that electronics has been integrated into the menus and the rest of the bike, it's brilliant on this. All right, let's see if we've got a clear bit of road here. Yes, we do. See ya! <laughs> oh, colour brake the chip for the junction just in case. Oh, my hazards are going. Oh, I wasn't braking that hard. Behave yourself. The RS34 has always been incredibly stable in the corners. This one feels no different. It's it's so confidence inspiring. I know I'm not going to be able to give it too much today because it's a bit wet, it's cold, and this has got super courses on it, you know, so we've got to be a little bit careful. But I can tell, even at these speeds, there's so much confidence, so much confidence in the corners. And at the moment the suspension is, well I'm in the automatic mode, which means it does adjust based on how you're riding. And it's quite, you know, it's quite bumpy. It's quite bumpy, I will check my settings in a minute. <laughs> it gives so much feedback from the road, through the bars, I can feel the texture of the tarmac. It feels beautiful. Faster corner, let's hang out a little bit. Power! It is a missile! Brakes! So much feel to those brakes. So controllable on the brakes. There's nothing more, there's nothing to sap your confidence faster than brakes where you've got to really pull the lever and they don't give you any confidence. There's so much confidence. You can stop with the brakes on this. They are the Stylema calipers and they're wonderful on this. First gear, let's see, 65 miles an hour down into first. Perfectly fine. That's the wheel. So I say wheelie control is off at the moment because I like a bit of that. I like the wheel coming up. Beautiful. There's not another bike, another road bike on the planet which is as intoxicating, as fun, as adrenaline fueled as this on the road. It is so good. So there she is, the 2021 Aprilia RS34 1100 factory. Now new for this year is the styling of course. It's unmistakably styling cues from the RS660. The whole front end with the LEDs is like I say, lifted directly from the RS660. Or what I do like about the front end is it looks modern. It looks really, really modern now, which it was really lacking before. All the indicators are now built into those running lights. Let me show you. So you've got the indicators built in to the running lights, which is nice, and they're no longer in the mirrors. So it's all completely clean. You've not got any indicators sticking out. And then of course, you've got these big wings down the side. So they're all integrated now. They're not sort of, they don't look as stuck on as the older bike did. Um, I do find, I don't know if I'm 100% sold on how they look though. You know, they're very big from the front. It, it's definitely, a statement piece I suppose that front end with those wings but I'm not sure I'm not it's not completely growing on me yet the looks of this bike I still think the older bike was more pretty another thing with the 2021 bike I'm not sure the fit and finish is quite as nice as the old bike you know, there's a lot of plastic on this on the old factory bike you used to get you know, odd bits of carbon and stuff. There's a lot of plastic on this machine. The wheels on the RSV4 are also forged. So with the, uh, with the factory version, you get forged wheels, the Olin suspension, and the different paint scheme. But they're the main changes really from the non-factory. And the non-factory version of this is only about 17,000 pound at the moment at wheels. So the non-factory is actually a really, really tempting price. The back end is exactly the same as the Tuono, you know, that new tailpiece, the new seat. The seat is much more comfortable, I think, than last year's bike. It's a little bit longer in the seat. 
yeah, it's red, you know, get over it. <laughs> but it's definitely longer. It's quite a spacious bike to ride F from the leg and the, the seating area. It's just a little bit risky because the bars are quite forward. I actually think the whole bike seems to be a bit longer. It definitely seems like a bigger bike now. The old RSV4 was quite a small motorcycle. This doesn't look small anymore. I'd say this actually looks a little bit bigger with those big wings, you know, and that frontage. It looks a little bit bigger than like the S1000RR, I would say. It's no longer a tiny midgets bike. There's the Stylemas and the Brembos up front, you know, Olin's EC2 suspension and all that with the forged wheel, as I mentioned. It's all got, it's got the kit on. Got mirrors which fold for traffic, which is quite nice. Also, the switch gear is exactly the same as what is on the RS660. I'm not sure this switch gear looks like a £23,000 motorcycle switch gear. Also new for 2021 is the underslung swinging arm. So the whole swinging arm's different. You know, it's underbraced, sort of very MotoGP-esque. Um, but the engine looks the same, the same casings on the engine. But there she is, the 2021 Aprilia. RSV4 1100 factory. What a weapon. For 2021, the Tuono gained a fuel gauge. At long last, the Tuono had a fuel gauge. Aprilia finally had a fuel gauge on their premium motorcycles. For some reason, it's been omitted from the RSV4. I don't know why. Why put it on the Tuono, but not put it on the RSV4? And you could say, it's because it's a track bike. I get that, but then why has it got cruise control? <laughs> so it's obviously not just geared as a track bike. Also, while we're talking about slightly annoying things, as I mentioned, it does have cruise control, but you can't use the cruise control unless you're in third gear and above. And because the bike is so tall geared, that means you can't sort of use the cruise until over 30 miles an hour. And I'm doing, it says 1500 revs now and 32 miles an hour. This is as slow as I can go. In the, in the third gear to engage the cruise control. So you slide it across till you get the flashing green light, which is also annoying, so it looks like you've left your indicators on. And then you click it across again to engage it. And you've got to be above 31 miles an hour. Won't let you do it below 31 miles an hour. And it won't let you do it unless you're in third gear. And you need to be in second gear at 30 miles an hour or you're over, overly laboring the engine. Why can't I have it on in second gear? There's no reason for that. But when you come to a corner <laughs> or open it up, all is forgiven. If you remember back to my Toronto review, I said that it was a little bit lashy, the engine. Well, this is exactly the same. I think it's better for 2021. It's less lashy. The low, you know, the very low, below 3,000 rev, the manners are a little bit better. And they were definitely better on the Tuono. But because this is higher geared, it makes it worse. It makes that whole lash and bottom end manners of the bike a little bit more noticeable because you're in that range of revs a bit longer because the gearing's a bit taller. It's definitely harder work than a straight four. And the, the, the S1000 double R was just so easy in town, you know, just because of the way straight fours work and the rev is so nice that the revs are, are so clean and smooth, even very low down the rev range. On this, it is a little bit lumpy. Sort of. I'd say really below 4,000 revs. And as I knock it down, you know, even manually losing, using the clutch, it's not smooth. There's a certain way of riding these to be very, very smooth. It's not, you know, it's not, aut it's not automatically smooth and beautiful to ride. You've got to work on the way, you, you've got to ride around it a little bit. See, riding slowly, it's not the most enjoyable experience on this. It's such a good experience when you do open it up. It's so nice to tuck your leg just under that tank a little bit. <laughs> what 
the machine. So going into the menu, into the suspension control, you've got six settings. So you've got active ones, which mean they adjust based on how you're riding. And you've got the manual ones, which don't adjust, so that they're static, if you like. And if you go into one of the, of the settings, you can then also sort of set the base settings of sort of front firmness, rear firmness, brake support. And you can, at the moment, it's all standard, but if I want, I can go down and I can increase the firmness or reduce the firmness for each of the settings. So I'm going to pick one. And I'm not going to do it on the active ones. I'm going to take a manual one like M3. And I've already done it there. I've already wound M3 back, so it's soft. So I'm going to go as soft as possible on the M3 setting. There we go. And I'm going to see if I can notice a difference between the different modes, if it's much softer when everything is wound right back. I don't care much for the steering damper. That can stay. There we go. We've got everything wound back now. So M3 is the one to wind everything back. And if we go back to the main screen and in my user mode, if I press them now, if I go into the main menus, you've got the three different modes here and I can now select. Unfortunately, you can only change the user mode. You can't change any of the other settings for the street or the sport. You can when you ride, you can the suspension, but only the suspension. So this is how I've got it set M3 as my default suspension, which is the softer one. So coming out, so when I'm in my user mode, I now should have soft suspension. So let's see. Mm, it feels fairly nice now. It's still firm. It's not super soft. I mean, obviously this is a bike with, which is track focused, you know, and the BMW S1000RR definitely went softer than this, as did the Tuono. So the spring rates on this are probably probably heavier sprung than what the Tuono is but in the soft setting it's not too bad I can live with it but it's not as soft as the s 1000 rr in its road setting so now I'm in the sport mode which has got the harder active suspension yeah it's a little, it feels a little bit harder but it's not that easy to tell the difference on the BMW it was sort of like night and day, the difference. And even on the Tuono, it was night and day. It's not quite as obvious that it's softer. So the 2021 RSV4 1100 factory, what do I think? Well, there's no doubt it is an incredible machine. It is the most insane, fun, adrenaline pumping motorcycle I've ever ridden. I, th I think it, yeah, the old one was amazing. This is a step above. I don't know if it's massively different. It feels a little bit bigger and perhaps not quite. I remember the old one being not quite as much weight on your wrist. I don't know, it's hard to tell, but it's definitely a bloody exceptional motorcycle, okay? The changes to the electronics, the suspension, you know, everything is a step up. It is beautiful, but, and there's the but, it is an absolute, crazy motorcycle it is way i could never own this it's way too crazy for me i can't help but open it up it just eggs you on to do silly things really and maybe you know if you owned it you'd be a bit different you'll be right you'll get you'll get over that initial couple of weeks of riding like an absolute spaz and then you'd slow down you'd get more in control and you'd, you'd get control of yourself i don't know but this, there's never been a bike like it that eggs you on to go fast. And that's the difference with the double R. The S1000 double R is an incredibly fast machine, but it doesn't egg you on like this. It's quite happy to cruise slowly, you know, enjoy the ride. It's enjoying the ride business again, but it's, it's not like this. This doesn't really like going slowly. It's a little bit, you know, the gearbox on this lash, you know, it doesn't like low revs very much. It would much rather be singing and, and, and revving its nuts off whereas the s and double r is a better road bike it is definitely a better road bike but the thrills from this the sound from this it is a beautiful thing absolutely incredible and if i wanted an amazing track bike you know a bike to do a lot of say you wanted to do more track days than you did road days this i think is the one i think that the new electronics on this 
I think it's probably maybe pushed it slightly above the double R. The electronics on both of those bikes are incredible, but the, the engagement on this is unbelievable. The engagement is through the roof on this. Compared to the Tuono, I can see the Tuono is you know very similar to this but more comfortable if i was going to have one of the two as a road bike it would be the tuono without a doubt but the tuono still suffers from some of the the craziness that this has the tuono still makes you want to go too fast it still makes you want to push on it still sounds as good as this watch the junction shop see the tuono also sounds incredible and it sounds exactly like this really I don't think this sounds any different to the Tolono. So there we go guys, thanks very much for watching. As always, really appreciate it. Massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for letting me ride this beast. Oh, I've wanted to ride one of these all year. It hasn't disappointed, it really hasn't disappointed. I'm a little bit disappointed that it's a little bit risky, you know, more so than the Double R, maybe more so than last year's bike as well, but the improvements they've made to this, it is an incredible machine, absolutely incredible. So massive thanks to Wheels. If you want to get your hands on one of these, these are, I think Wheels have got a bit of a dip. In the winter, Aprilia, oh well, Wheels motorcycles always do a lot of deals on their Aprilia bikes. They tend to buy up all of the remaining stock and then do some decent deals. So check out their website. I think this is down, it's a £23,000 bike. I think it's down to about 19 and a half now. Maybe even with the Akopovich exhaust. Go and have a look at their website. There's some incredible deals on this. And for 19 and a half grand, this is amazing. That's cheaper than the M Sport Double R for a bit of Italian Exotica. So uh, check out their website and see what takes your fancy. But there we go, guys. Thanks for watching as always. And I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers. Power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Oh, I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this.